Hey everyone, it's Charlene. I am so excited to bring this video to you today. We are going to be going over a bunch of different fun ways to use acetate. So the first way you can use acetate is with alcohol inks. Now this is really fun. I have several here that I'm using. Whenever I'm doing alcohol ink, I always like to start out with blending solution. So you can see that was the first thing I added. And then I'm using two different colors today. I am using Laguna, and then I'm also using Tranquil, which is the blue one. And that is a pearl alcohol ink. So it has a little bit of shimmer to it. So the blender solution, you can see when you add that to your acetate, it causes the colors to sort of blend together versus right there. You can see I added some isopropyl alcohol, which causes them to kind of separate out. So I like to go back and forth depending on the type of look I am trying to get when I'm using the alcohol inks between those two. Now I did add in some snow cap additive and the best way to describe that is it looks almost like a watery acrylic paint. It's solid, it, you can't see through it. So it's really fun to add on the acetate because then you have opaque spots on the acetate wherever you've put that additive. Now, the key to getting a good outcome, at least for me with alcohol inks, is layers. I go in and I add some of this and some of that and then some more. And you can see there, I am using a tool to kind of blow the alcohol inks around. It's just, you squeeze on it and it blows some air onto that, whatever you're working on. And you can kind of guide your alcohol inks where you want them to go by using that tool. And this video is sped up. It does take a little while to do a panel, but not too bad. I think it takes about I don't know, maybe six to eight minutes for me to put together a panel. And so you can squeeze the blower so that you get just a small amount of air to come out, or you can really kind of squeeze on that and you're going to get a big burst of air. So depending on what you're looking for, you can get different looks by doing that, squeezing down on it hard or soft, whatever works for you. So you can see when I turn the acetate over, how absolutely beautiful that panel looks. So I am using a stamp and die set that I bought back in December from Concord and Ninth. It's the Big Thanks stamp and die set. They're available in individually. And I will link to everything I'm using down below in the description. But this set is so cool. I've taken my acetate and I ran it through my die cutting machine and I just set down a piece of copy paper so that I didn't kind of get alcohol ink all over my platform and I am die cutting out the big things. I have been waiting to use this stamp set and die set and it's so cool. You, you're going to see all the different ways you can use it. But I'm coming in now. When you're using acetate, you might need to kind of poke out or maybe use your craft knife to cut little spots of the acetate because it is a little bit thicker. In hindsight, I would have ran it through my die cutting machine twice. I only did it once. But you can see that beautiful effect. It almost looks like the inside of a seashell where it's kind of pearlized when you use the pearl alcohol inks. Those are my favorite. I like to use them though in conjunction with non-pearlized alcohol inks because I think it gives the pearlized look even more oomph because it has kind of other colors around it. I don't know if that makes sense. But you can use liquid glue like I'm using here. This is just Gina K Connect glue to adhere the acetate panel to your card. Or you can use a, a double-sided adhesive sheet before you die cut out whatever you're die cutting. Now I think I would have preferred to use the method of the double-sided adhesive sheet and you can see on a different card I do use that method. And when you're cutting out a big word die cut like that, just make sure that you don't get rid of all of the little tiny pieces that you need to inset. So I've glued that down, set it aside. I just put an acrylic block on there to help it 
hold down while the glue is drying. And then I get two for one cards, which is awesome. I'm using the cutout here on another card and I'm just gluing that down in the center. I wish you guys could see this in real life. It is such a pretty effect on the acetate. Uh, really beautiful and super easy to do and very creative. Uh, you know, the beautiful thing about the alcohol inks is if you don't like how something looks, you just put a little more blending solution or you just put a little more alcohol down on your sheet and you can add more color. Now I am adding a little sentiment here on the side that comes with the steam set. I think this is so cute. It says, love your face, which is totally something I would say to somebody. So I thought this was awesome. And I'm just adding that on the side of the card there. So I've come in here and I've cut a black matting layer to go around my main panel. So I'm just going to glue that down and then I'm going to glue it down to an A2 sized four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this card is going to be done. The alcohol inks are really the star of the show when you're using the acetate like this. And I think using the acetate, you get not only the pearl from the alcohol ink and the beautiful colors, but then you also get the gloss of the top of the acetate, which just adds even more to these alcohol ink cards. And then on a bonus, because you are putting the side that actually has the alcohol ink down on top of the, the paper, you don't have any tackiness or strange kind of texture to the um, top of the card because the acetate is just smooth. It's just like regular acetate. Now I am using today um, acetate from scrapbook.com and it is also heat embossable, which is really fun. I'm going to show you how to do that later as well. So now I'm coming in and I mentioned there was a stamp that went with the die cut here and this is so cute. I just lined up my letters inside of the cut out pieces and then picked it up with the door of my Misty and I just stamped it here with some black ink in intense black from Simon's Stamp and look at how that pops. It looks so cool. So here's the two finished cards. I added a little sentiment inside that one that says you rock. Um, and then I left the inside of the other one blank. So that's two ways to use acetate. You can do die cuts. You can use alcohol ink on there. And now I'm going to show you a couple of other ways as well. So here I've taken just a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel, and I've added some double-sided adhesive to it before I die cut out the thanks die. And this makes things a little bit easier later on. So once I have that out, I'm just going to go ahead and pop out all of the pieces again, being careful to make sure I don't lose any of those little inset pieces. So once I have everything popped out, I just remove all of the release paper off of the back of the card panel. And then I'm going to lay my panel down and adhere the acetate to the card panel. It's a little easier to do it in that order because then you don't have the middle piece of the die cut kind of flopping around trying to stick to everything. So I use a craft mat that has um, grid lines and I find it really helpful when I'm trying to line up things. And then you may have seen earlier, I was using a small silicone mat to do my alcohol inks on. Um, I like to use that for alcohol inks or ink blending. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. So I went ahead there and I put all of the letters inside and then I picked it up with the front of my misty door and then I used an anti-static powder tool on top of my card panel because we are going to heat emboss the letters onto the acetate. Now this is a really cool technique. I love being able to heat emboss onto the acetate. Now I do always double stamp when I am using embossing ink. That's just Versamark embossing ink that I'm using there. I find it usually gives me a better impression. And then I have come in with some Simon Says, Simon Says Stamp Embossing Powder in white. 
And then I am actually using this new brush I received, which is a surface sweep. And it works so well for removing pieces of embossing powder that shouldn't be anywhere other than where the embossing ink is. And it's also really great for using perfect pearls for dusting off after you've applied perfect pearls. I'm going to do a video about that as well at some point. So coming in here with my heat tool and uh, my heat gun, and I'm just heating up when you are working with acetate, you do want to keep your heat gun on the acetate for the shortest amount of time possible. As soon as that embossing powder melts, you definitely want to get it off of there because while it is resistant to heat, um, it will melt if you keep the heat gun on there for too long. And in fact, sometimes it kind of warps a little bit, even with just the normal amount. So you do want to move quickly there. So now you can see I've just popped out the little inset pieces and I am going ahead and adhering them out of swell. So I was talking before about the silicone mat. I actually took a really big silicone mat that's really reasonably priced that I bought from scrapbook.com and I cut it into four pieces that would fit inside of my Misty. So now I have four silicone mats that I can use on top of my craft mat for different things or that I can fit into my Misty, uh, which is pretty awesome. So back to the card here, I have gone ahead and I'm using my score buddy to just uh, adhere the card panel to another piece. And I've used double-sided tape and I left the release paper on the top piece so that I can add some shaker mix in there, some confetti and make a shaker card, which is fun. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that I can continue to bring you more crafty content in the future. Okay, back to the card. I have managed to get sequins everywhere, which I always do, but now I'm just peeling off that release tape and closing up the shaker card. And then you can adhere your panel to whatever size card base you're working with. Here, I'm just using an A2 size card base and again, using my score buddy to go ahead and line up the panel with the card base so that I can get a nice straight alignment, which is nice. All right, here is the next way you can use acetate. I am actually just using some alcohol ink markers and I am coloring on the acetate. This is such a a quick and easy way to use acetate and the outcome is just lovely. Now you could heat emboss something on your acetate and then color the back with your Copic markers and so those show through and it gives you kind of a stained glass technique. Here I'm just showing you a really, really quick and easy way to use those alcohol markers. I'm literally just using the chisel tip and running back and forth very quickly to make a striped pattern to just to give kind of a pretty background um, on my card. And you're going to see it looks really, really pretty once it is flipped over and put onto a card base. So I'm using two colors here. I'm just using BG 49 and BG 13. And then I'm going to glue this down. You could use again, glue, or you could use double-sided tape. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I had used double-sided tape, but that's okay. It does show up underneath the acetate. Uh, if you use glue or any other kind of adhesive, um, something you can use that shows up less is glossy accents. You can actually use glossy accents as glue and it works really well under the acetate. I wasn't too worried here because I actually, you're going to see in the finished photo lineup, I went ahead and I cut out a white frame and I applied it over the top of the card. And I think it actually gave the card a more finished look. So stick around for the pictures at the end. It looks pretty cool. So just adhering that down on top of the card panel, like I mentioned, and then I'm going to take the thanks 
that is the cutout piece from my panel that I used on my shaker card. And just going to remove the release paper and apply that to the acetate. So again, another two for one card, which is awesome. So using these techniques, I was able to put together four cards today and uh, it didn't take very long once I actually figured out what I wanted to put together and they all have different things, which is really fun. Now I have a set of thank you cards. I have a shaker. I have this pretty Copic marker colored kind of window card. And then I also have the two alcohol ink cards, which I think that technique in particular is probably my favorite. I think it just looks awesome. Um, and I'm just going in here now and I'm going to get that nice and straight on my card before I commit and push everything down. Once I have that done, I'm again going to come in with the letter stamps. And so you can see, you can do that as an inset, or you can do it on top of a cutout, um, a die cut cutout. And I just think this stamp set is so cool. I, I love how it looks. I love that I can move those thanks letters around. I could use those and line them up. I could just so many different things. You stamp them in different colors. I mean, anyway. Okay, so there's our first card with that beautiful alcohol ink and our second card here with the alcohol ink as well. Oh, I wish you guys could see the shine in person. It looks so cool. Third card there, we, and like I said, stick around because I'm going to put a frame around it. And then our last card there, the shaker card. So those are all really cool. All right, guys, those are my finished cards. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Again, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will be back again soon with another crafty video. Happy crafting. <laughs>